The last tournament that I played was nearly two months ago, and that isn't really out of choice. Tennis, as you may know, is a pretty expensive sport, especially at professional level. So in that time, I've just been doing what I can to stay fit, keep my eye on training as much as possible, and earn money when I can. In the last year, I've only played 20 matches, and I'll be honest, I've found it really difficult. I've almost been sat on the sidelines just watching everyone else get a better ranking or improve or do well and it feels like I've almost gone backwards but don't get me wrong as sad as that sounds I'm still extremely fortunate to be in the position that I am taking tennis away I'm fit I'm healthy live a great life have no bills to pay no rent I have everything to gain and nothing to lose no matter how tough things get for me, I know that there's people who never even had the chance to play tennis. And I think it's this sort of perspective that's really helped me in the last few months. And it's made me want to make the most of absolutely any opportunity that I get to compete. It's made me want to work harder, find better ways to improve, and just carry on playing for as long as I can. When I think back to the best times that I've had around tennis, it's never really been when I've been making more money. It's been when I've had those really close matches, coming through tight battles, narrowly losing, feeling that thrill of winning. Don't get me wrong, the money can be nice. But I think when all of it's said and done, I think that's the thing that I'll remember the most. Right, let's crack on. What are we doing for breakfast? Normally I have a five egg omelet, fats, protein, olive oil, just unbelievable fuel. Then I have about 200 grams of porridge, cinnamon, honey, microwave it, done. Can't go without a coffee and a beetroot juice. You ready to go? So this week we're back in Sheffield. This is the place where my parents live um, and we're actually pretty lucky that there is a coach down the road with a really good center that we can train in um, and he's actually been my coach for two years now um, yeah the difficult thing is I've been in London for like quite a while quite a few months and the thing is when I'm down there I'm not living like really really comfortably I'm like staying on friends sofas and floors and and that kind of thing but I'm able to train with better players and I'm able to earn a little bit more money down there. So if I wanted to earn the same money, don't know why I closed it. We're going in there. <laughs> you're not even driving. I'm not even driving, you're driving. <laughs> um, yeah, the difficult thing is about being down there is that, you know, obviously it's not the most comfortable thing. I'm staying in friends' houses and on friends' floors, sofas, that kind of thing. And my days are quite long. Like I'm getting up early doing quite a lot of like paid hitting and my training is kind of like it's not it's not a priority really whereas here in Sheffield I can prioritize my training like I can be fresh like I'm sleeping in my own bed so but the downside is I can't really earn as much money so that's the thing it's kind of there's pros and cons to both um, but as I'm like going into play tournaments in the next kind of two weeks I thought that to come home really work on my game work hard um, would be the right thing to do get myself in the right situation or else all the money that I've saved up is just going to go to waste if I'm not even playing very well so I've come back here to just basically focus on my game So we're here, this is Abbeydale Tennis Club. One thing that when I stop playing tennis, I will not miss is carrying around this fucking massive bag. And now I have two massive bags. <laughs> if anybody's wondering why I've got two tennis bags, this has got all the rackets in that I'm doing like play testing for. So I've got a load of old rackets, like brand new rackets from 2024. So yeah, 
I'm just gonna, they're coming soon. Um, so I'm gonna demo a lot. So uh, yeah, we're pretty much gonna jump straight onto court with my coach. Um, yeah, hopefully I'll share a little bit of like what I'm working on and you know, how well, hopefully you guys can improve yourself. Yeah, I'd say that this year has been like pretty tough for me because last year I was like winning a lot of matches. I was towards the end of the year, especially I was taking out guys like 350, 400 in the world, like feeling really good. And then I just kind of like ran out of money. Like I got to December and I was like, I owed people money for the tournaments that I'd played and, and that sort of thing. And then I had to work to pay that money back. And then, yeah, like I just kind of realized that without money, I, I, I couldn't really play properly. Um, all through the summer, I was working while playing tournaments. So I was doing like paid hits in the morning and then uh, playing matches in the afternoon. And yeah, it was just, it was just tough. Like I didn't really, Again, I didn't really think about it too much. I was kind of just going from one thing to the other, but I realized in kind of like February of this year that it was just so unsustainable to do it like that. Like my body was hurting, like, you know, I was getting to tournaments and running out of money anyway. So yeah, I lost quite a lot of momentum from last year and like, it's gonna take quite a lot of hard work to get it back. Like I was playing really, really well. And it was just, it was just a shame, like, if I'd have gone into that pre-season in December and been able to work really hard, like, and do a lot with my game, like, I could have come into this 2024 season, like, playing really well, but I just didn't. And since then, I've kind of been slowly getting a bit worse, but now I've kind of decided that, you know, the tournaments that I'm uh, going to play, I'm going to be able to prepare for them really well. So, yeah, I feel like uh, my fitness has definitely suffered a little bit, like, not training at the intensity that probably I could have done when I was in London, just because doing more paid hits, um, that kind of thing, like, you know, I'm only training like one or two hours a day, pretty much, and I'm not doing as many gym sessions as I want. So yeah, I can feel like my strength out of the corners isn't probably as good as it was. Like, you know, my general like fitness in terms of endurance, probably not as good, like, I was going through two or three hour training sessions and, you know, feeling pretty good and, I, and I'll do an hour now and I'm like, you know, a bit tired, but it won't take long for that to get back. It's more the mental stuff, like the mental focus, so. So I was doing a lot of work on my movement, just getting my footwork right, especially into the corners and then building that into moving up the court, covering the net as much as I can. So it's nothing really complicated. It just takes a little while to get it back. So we're doing a lot of simple drills, like moving side to side and then a short one. And the objective of the short one was just to see it as early as possible. Like this time around, my level's definitely getting better, like quicker, um, like physically, because I've been sleeping on people's floors and sofas and not really like looking after my body in the best way. I've still just got that little bit of like stiff feeling in my back and shoulder and all that sort of stuff. So that'll go. Um, you know, the more I'm training for myself, it'll definitely go. Um, but yeah, I think because the money side is like, it's not taken care of, I've got, I've worked obviously pretty hard, not spent a lot of money for the past few months. And I've got myself in a position where I can play the next kind of like month or two, um, you know, without much of an issue. Uh, that's kind of hot off my mind a little bit for now and I'm more just focused on my level. So yeah, I think I'm not where I want to be, but I'm definitely in a better position than I was when I was competing in the summer, for sure. Um, but yeah, should we, uh, so because I'm here and there's a shop in the, in the tennis club, I do a little bit of work for them. So I'm gonna go and string some rackets, get some lunch, and then the next, session that I have is at three o'clock and I'll do three till 5.30. Um, again, an hour of that is for myself and then an hour is to help pay for the coaching that I get. So in return for, uh, in return for the coaching, I do hours of paid hitting for the players here. So 
don't get me wrong, they're still pretty good. Um, and then I do a few hours of work in the shop, earn a bit of money, and then also string my own rackets, which saves me a lot of quiche. So the tennis life can be pretty full on sometimes. And if you thought I didn't have a life outside of tennis, then you're probably right. But every now and then, between working in London, training, I do get to escape a little bit. And I do need to satisfy Ella's need for caffeine before she has any more EPBs. So whenever we can, we just try and spend some quality time together. Even if it's just going out for a coffee, just because we don't get a huge amount of time together. And I think it's something interesting that you don't really see a lot of tennis players speak about is the relationships with their partners or families. I know that a few players struggle with being away, especially for long periods of time. I personally don't struggle too much with going away for tournaments or training, probably because I'm used to it and I do really love it. But I think some real quality downtime is needed. Just to rest, reset and refocus. It's probably more difficult for Ella, me being away. God knows why. That's... Yeah. I have done. I'd say this is probably the best coffee in Sheffield. Like, pretty comfortably. Not that I've been to loads of coffee places, but it's pretty good. Do you want to just, like, talk us through your coffee choices? Like, why do you choose a mocha? Because <laughs> it's like a baby coffee. It's nice and sweet. Do you mean you can't taste the coffee? You can just taste the chocolate yeah. and the sugar in the milk. But it gives you a nice little caffeine kick. Yeah. To be fair, coffee just doesn't work on me, so I just choose whatever coffee. The only coffee I don't like is a latte. A little you don't like black coffee either. I force myself to drink black coffee. I've like, never seen you life, have a black coffee. Life is too short. Mm. I used to drink black coffee at Mel's hairdressers. That does look really good, actually. That, yeah, you see, look, look at the difference. Mine's like fun and exciting and a treat, and yours is ah, miserable. But that's the whole point of drinking coffee. It's like to taste the coffee. I'm sure many people out there would agree with me. <laughs> what is this, Sean, Sean drinks coffee, not Sean plays tennis? Good. So good. It is really you'll, good. You'll be here, drinking actually. mine next, though. I drink it when you don't want it mm. to get the money's worth. I'll work the camera so it's definitely on. Hmm. <laughs> it's pretty good. So after a pretty great week in Sheffield, it was time to come back to London. I had work to do, training, and potentially find that sponsor. So it was back to sleeping on my friend's airbed in his office, getting up early, for training or work. I can't even remember which one it was. So like I said at the start of the video, it's been about two months since my last tournament, and I'm just about to start playing again as I've saved up enough money to get back on the road. So this week I'm in London purely to try and play some practice sets, to get as match sharp as I can. I still did a few hours of work, but I wanted to try and stay as fresh as I could. Now I don't mind getting up early at all. I actually prefer it to get more done, but it's hard to eat enough before training. So I'll either eat a cereal bar and a banana or I'll just do the first session completely fasted. So the main aim in my training at the minute is to get some real confidence back in the patterns that I'm using. So for example, with my serve, I'll know exactly where I want to serve and where the next ball wants to go. I'm not gonna lie at the minute, I haven't got a huge amount of confidence in this just because I haven't been playing matches. But each practice set that I play, I'm getting better. And initially I was getting a little bit down on myself. I was getting a bit worried that I wasn't going to be able to produce a very good level for the upcoming tournaments. But I'm seeing improvements every day and I'm happy with that. And I'm also seeing a clear plan of where my game is going. So I'm sticking to taking the ball early. I'm sticking to really committing to my serve, going after it, first and second, no matter the situation. So after training, there's always time for a coffee. 
but we are on a budget. It's the instant for us. So thank you again for watching. Join me next time where I play my first futures in two months. Like and subscribe for more tennis content and I'll see you next time.